All right, so a new, new studio here in front of the whiteboard, yeah. uh, trying something new. We will do some uh, five minute uh, crafts. Crafts, yeah, <laughs> short <laughs> topics about uh, different cool things. The couch is still there, but it's just. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's empty at the moment. Exercising a little bit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So um, yeah, we are just jump right in and today we're going to talk about Lambda, which is a massive topic and we're going to focus on uh, two aspects, it's on one dimension, it's async and sync. So, so the, the ways how to uh, invoke yeah. Lambda function. Yeah, so we have uh, async and we have sync, meaning yeah. as we all know it's a common uh, normal pattern outside of cloud, outside of AWS, it's just you can um, call it in a, in a in a request response and you're blocking for the response, that would be sync. Yeah. And async is simply you're just basically queuing queuing something on a queue and you might get a response or it's triggering something. It just yeah, depends it's, it's on the architecture. Fire and forget. Yeah. You just send a, re a request and then you move on and whenever it is finished it will it will yeah. uh, uh, not notify you that it is mm -hmm. it is done. Yes. So what we want to do now is let's start with async here and yep. go through a few of these uh, AWS services that uh, implement this kind of async behavior with lambdas. Yeah. So yeah. Put a lambda here. Yeah, you can go ahead with another <laughs> color. Yeah, you can put lambda. Okay, cool. So I would say let's um, let's put down a couple of services that uh, uh, in AWS uh, like um, S3. Uh, object storage notifications. Yeah. So whenever whenever object lands in S3, it can uh, fire an event uh, to Lambda, and uh, Lambda can then pick up the object and do something with it. Yeah. Next to it, uh, also quite often used service is Kinesis. Yes. And uh, Kinesis is used uh, for for streaming data and video streaming, um, and. Um, Every time a new message arrives into Kinesis, it also can uh, fire uh, async requests, so event, to Lambda to finish mm -hmm. something. Yeah. Uh, we can also mention uh, IoT service. IoT, exactly. IoT as well, so I'll put it here just to have a space. And uh, I'm intentionally doing like dots with uh, just one arrow here so that it doesn't, comes back, it doesn't come yeah. back, everything is Perfect. one way only. Yeah. Uh, so Yes, from queues. So, for example, SQS. Mm -hmm. SQS would be a nice candidate uh, where you are sending messages to SQS. Uh, it's not the only queue in AWS. Uh, mm -hmm. There are others. So you can use uh, also, let's say, Kinesis for the same purpose. You can use yes. Kafka, for example, managed version, yeah. um, uh, RabbitMQ. So the difference there is only a number of messages, frequency of messages, size, size of messages. Mm -hmm. uh, that is something that differentiate between uh, which service you would use for queuing. Yeah. But each of those, whenever the message arrives, it triggers Lambda function. Yeah. Then uh, notifications, for example. SMS. SMS, exactly. Service that... Um, very flexible thing as well. Yeah, uh, so <coughs> for example, SNS integrates very nicely with CloudWatch alarms. So whenever alarm is triggered on something inside your architecture, uh, infrastructure in AWS, SNS can trigger Lambda and then Lambda can do something about it. Yeah. And um, step functions, for example, yes. orchestration service for Lambda. I'll just put step functions like this. Uh, step functions is an interesting service because it operates in both ways. It can invoke, invoke Lambda in both asynchronous and synchronous way. Mm -hmm. That's why we're going to put it on this side later on as well. Mm -hmm. And I would say um, there's also like a Lambda itself. Mm -hmm. So Lambda itself can call another Lambda mm -hmm. uh, through a feature called Lambda Destinations where uh, you can asynchronously invoke, invoke Lambda. Mm -hmm. uh, beside these AWS services, what you can do is you can just use a normal SDK from uh, AWS in the language of your choice. Let's say if that's Python, that would be Boto3. Th uh, mm -hmm. uh, and there you have calls where you put the type to be uh, event and then it's asynchronous call or it can be type request response and then it's a synchronous call. Yeah. So I would just put here like SDK as another way to asynchronously call Lambda function. Yeah. And the last one that we also talked about earlier was uh, event bridge. Ah yes, excellent. Event bridge, yes. Event bridge is a relatively new service yeah. that um, is super powerful. Um, yeah. To, to be used, it, it based on um, um, it's like a service bus, 
and then you have rules and depending on the uh, if the rule is satisfied it can redirect the messages to different uh, yeah. Uh, different destinations. One of them is Lambda. Well. Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting thing. And the mental model I often think about is you have this river and you're fishing, and you have different hooks. These are the rules. Yeah. And then depending on the hook, you get different fish. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Uh, excellent. So let's look at sync. A sync. Okay. So sync space is very interesting, especially um, it's a it's used for different architectural um, um, models. Let's say mm -hmm. right. So. Uh, for the mobile and web applications, you would yeah. go for the usually for the sync way where you send a request. It's the normal way. Yeah. And you wait knows. for the response. Yeah. Yes. REST APIs. Exactly. So for API instance. API gateway yeah. um, is the one that comes to straight yeah. to your mind. Yeah. So I'm putting like uh, arrows on both sides. There and back. Rest and a response. Mm -hmm. response is coming. Uh, then, for example, <coughs> uh, beside API gateway, uh, what uh, we can use uh, as well is like a load balancer, application load balancer. Yeah, ALB. ALB. So ALB integrates with Lambda as well. Uh, both these services are used for REST API mm -hmm. architectural style. Mm -hmm. And uh, but if you want to use a GraphQL architectural mm -hmm. style, mm -hmm. there is another service that integrates synchronously with Lambda, mm -hmm. and that is AppSync. AppSync, yeah. Sync. And also to, to add to that, um, we also have um, WebSockets, which is supported by all of them. All of them. I would say in the next episode, mm -hmm. we'll focus just on these three yeah. to understand how front-end API could be built, yeah. uh, what is the difference between these services, and when you should use this one compared to, to some other ones. Yeah, really the thinking, the trade-offs. So trade-offs, yes. We said uh, step functions as well. Yes. Step functions can invoke also lambdas in a um, synchronous way. And, and cloud front. Cloud front, yes. Cool. Cloud front. Also worth having one episode about just yeah. cloud front as yeah. a great security service. Um, when we say uh, cloud front lambda, we actually mean here lambda at the edge. So the lambda function that is being executed uh, at the edge, and we can discuss that whether it's really edge or, or, or not. Yes. Uh, but it's, it is executed on um, uh, a request coming in, mm -hmm. going to the origin, coming back, and going back to the uh, response, going back to the user. Yeah, there are many use cases there and, and uh, ways how you can utilize these building blocks together, um, standalone and so on. It's very interesting. So. And maybe for the last one, as we mentioned here, that Lambda third destinations can call um, another Lambda. Actually, synchronously, <coughs> same here, uh, through the SDK mm -hmm. as well, we can call from one, one Lambda synchronously other Lambda. Yeah. Whether it's a good idea or not, it's for discussion. <coughs> I would say it, it could be considered as anti-pattern uh, because while this lambda is executing and calling the other one, this one is just idle, waiting for response. You're paying for both. Yeah. Uh, this one is doing nothing and mm -hmm. you're being uh, billed by each millisecond mm -hmm. of this lambda being idle. Mm -hmm. So that's not idle situation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. but, uh, but for example, if we think about um, server-side rendering um, uh, frameworks, let's say Node.js, you could use Lambda here as a dispatcher mm -hmm. uh, and that would dispatch requests to other Lambdas mm -hmm. that uh, are processing the uh, requests. Yeah. So I think that's, that's it. Maybe we have missed uh, one or two of these services that also mm -hmm. integrate with Lambda, but I think uh, the point is to show that there are two ways uh, to, to invoke and which services are mostly used in async and sync way of uh, integrating with lambdas. Yeah, absolutely. And like we said, these, these uh, four ones here, we're going to now, in the next episode, take a look at in more detail. How do you build um, APIs for your web, for your mobile applications in a modern and interesting way, powered by Lambda? Yeah, let's do that. Great. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.